L 时代 ，L 时代 ，L L U N O A D O N A I。Each to each, you're still the same by the power of your name. L 时代 ，L 时代 ，L C O M C O N O A D O N A I。I will praise and lift you high. El Shaddai, through your love and through the ram, you saved the son of Abraham. Hello. Hello. Can you hear me? Hello, can you hear me? Okay, so who do we have on the line? Okay, we had a little trouble getting started tonight, but we're on the way right now, so it doesn't even matter, right? Okay, so hey, we're on our way now. Well, that's okay. <laughs> Come on now. All right, so turn to your word to、uh, Matthew, the fourth chapter, the first verse. We're talking about no excuses. No excuses. You know what we mean by no excuses. Uh oh. You got the sermon already down. You might want to get the whole thing. <laughs> okay, go to four one.
Now you're gonna have to. Up, now listen, if you don't use the one that you don't tore all the pieces, you got to get you a new one. I got to get you a new one. <laughs> okay. All right, go to the word now to Hebrews 4.14. Hebrews 4.14. If you want to participate in tonight's conversation, dial 919-747-3572. Go to Hebrews 4.14 because there are no excuses. See, a lot of times people want to use these things for excuses, for uh, saying, well, but that was a thing back in the day. This comedian used to say the devil made me do it. But we can see the devil is a liar, right? Do you have Hebrews 4.14 yet? Read that again.
Okay, one last one. First John, first John, that's at the very end of the word, close to Revelation, first John 2, 14, right before Revelation. First John 2, 14. Just turn your word all the way to the Revelations and back up to first. All right, 214, read it. No, first John 214. Not listen, Revelations, all the way to Revelation. If you're not that far back. 214. Keep going. All right, so let's go all the way back. Now, you got all the scriptures. I hope you wrote them down, right? You first read that when Jesus was tempted, he was, he, he was filled with the Holy Spirit and led into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. You understand? And the word said that we don't have a high priest that's not acquainted with our infirmity but was tempted on every point. Didn't you read that in Hebrew? And you also read that, look, all that it is in the world is the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life. You read that, right? So when we come into these uh, diverse temptations, count it now strange, but these are the same things that were tempted of the Lord our Father, our God, right? But he was without sin. So he showed us without any kind of... Uh, uh, putting on his anointing, his God suit, to defeat the devil as a man. So there's no excuse for you to come back talking about, well, I'm human and I'm not perfect and I'm not, okay. Just simply say you failed and moved on. Don't say you couldn't have overcome because he said there's no temptation known unto man, right? That is common, right? First, first uh, Corinthians 10. But with every one of these temptations, he's giving you an outlet to uh, escape. You understand? So if you continue on with that temptation, that means you desire to be tempted and continue on and you fail away from the knowing of the, the truth. Do you understand? All right. So don't ever put that shortcoming on the Lord talking about I wasn't strong enough to withhold hold it because there's nobody perfect but the Lord. And the, the devil will want you to think like that. But God told you to be perfect even if your father in heaven is perfect. Now, how are you perfect? Are you perfect in the flesh? Yeah, because in the flesh dwells no good thing, right? When the uh, rich young ruler called God, he said, good master, and God stopped him right there. What did he say? Why you call me good? Why call us me good? He said, there's none good but the father, right? All right, so the point he's trying to make to you is there a lot of times that you're going to go with your human proclivities, your vicissitudes because of the world. And he said, if you love the world, the love of God is not in you because all that's in the world is the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye and the pride of life, right? And he came in the world as a man born and, and shaped in sinful flesh, right? And he became a perfect sacrifice 
but after a second time, you'll appear without sin. You understand? He took on the the uh, the uh, sins of the world as a child, because without blood, there's n- without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. So when was he first shed his blood? No, he shed it earlier than that, didn't he? What did you do to me when I came out of your womb? What was one of the first things you had them do for me? I asked you, what did you have them do for me once I was born? I'm a boy. And did that bring forth blood? Okay, so without blood, there is no remission of sin, without the shedding of blood, right? And I asked you a question. I asked you, when did he shed his blood? When he was a boy, when he was a kid, just a child. And he and they cut away his flesh, and that was the flesh of the world. And he shed his blood for the remission of sins of the world. And so when John saw him, he protests, he proclaimed that to be the case. What did John say when he saw him? What did John say when he saw Jesus to be baptized? Behold the Lamb of God. So how could he have done that if he hadn't gone to the cross yet? He could do it. I just told you he did it when he was a baby. And he shed his blood and he was born in the sin so that I could live again. You understand? We we even have songs like that, but we don't have a thorough understanding of how the depths of that is. Now, once he completed his work, he said it was finished. He began you can't finish something that you didn't start, right? All right, so when he came on the scene, shed his blood on the cross, when he died, he had to die. He had to suffer, bleed, and die. And then once he died, he took away everything that the enemy stole from you, and he gave it back to you, gave you the keys to the kingdom. He went to the depths of Hades, Hades they call it, hell. And when he went to the underworld, he came back with the keys of the kingdom, and he gave them back to you. Behold, I've given you the keys of the kingdom. And whatsoever you bind on earth will be bind in heaven, and whatsoever you loose in earth will be loosed in heaven. I've given you these keys, these clues to how you can have righteousness, peace, joy, and the Holy Ghost. That's the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is not flesh and blood, but of righteousness, peace, uh, and joy, and the Holy Ghost. Not food and drink, none of that. If you want to participate in tonight's conversation, you can dial 919 919- Seven four seven three five seven two. Now let's go over what you just heard tonight. What did you just hear and understand? Now, what was the topic of the subject matter tonight? There was no excuses because when Jesus came down as a man in the form of sinful flesh, was led to the wilderness to be tempted by Satan, he was tempted on every point as we were, but yet without what? All right, so what's your excuse? As a man, and he says in Hebrews 4.14, we have a high priest. We don't have a high priest that's not acquainted with our infirmity, but was tempted on every point as we were, yet without sin. You understand that? 4.14. All right, so take... Take time and listen to this, and we'll come back and discuss it.
that pretty much summed it up, huh? <laughs> Amen. So there are no excuses. No excuses, right? So it's just like, so how can, how, how can you feel, how can you feel, <laughs> okay, hallelujah, how can you feel uh, right sinning after he's done all that for you, and just like he said, sometimes you don't do right, but you know, he still, that blood is still uh powerful it's still active it's alive right and it's good for sins today yesterday and forever huh? he don't have to but every time you sin just like he said in hebrews 6 1 every time we sin we put him on the cross of fresh seeing that we crucify cross christ of fresh uh every time you we let him down that's why you know, even he said, even you had earthly fathers that you revered. How much more should you revere and feel the the father of spirits and live, he tells us in Hebrews, right? So why would we even do that, uh, the uh, father of eternal salvation for those that obey him and, and knowing what he did for us and then still come up short over and over and over? And he says a righteous man find, falls seven times. Yet the Lord doesn't look at him as iniquitous, but he sees him as righteous. You understand? And that what kind of grace is that? That's amazing grace. That's where you get all these songs from, but people don't know the height and depth. They just start singing. After somebody gets shot, they sang amazing grace, but they don't know the depth of it, right? That he allowed us to live through all the transgressions that we commit on daily basis he said in the enemy accuse you daily and he has to act as your advocate every single day you understand all right so what do amen what do we learn tonight mm. Amen. And that's just the way he is. Sometimes we come up short, but that's just the way the Father is, right? So that's a good place to end the broadcast with uh, Smoking Norway. Let's see what he has to say about the Father, okay? Welcome, Mr. Mr. Troy Bright.
Troy Brown, ladies and gentlemen. gentlemen. That's just the way the Father is. So we'll close out the broadcast with that. Uh, do you agree? Did you hear what he said? Did you hear what he said? Amen. He was singing about us being uh, natural, but we don't want to make excuses. We, we don't want to make excuses for an occasion to sin. Amen. So we want you to come back next week on another edition of What Jesus Says, and we look forward to El having Shaddai, you. We love you. El Shaddai, El El Yono Adonai, Each to each, you're still the same. same. By the power of your name, El Shaddai, El Shaddai, El Kom Kono Adonai, I will praise and lift you high, El Shaddai. Through your love and through the ram, you saved the son of Abraham.